Who is Anna Lee Call? What happened to her after the Alien Resurrection movie? If you have been paying attention to the last couple of videos we have released, you will remember that we have been covering a lot of alien stuff. So recently, we did a video exploring all variants of the synthetics that have been featured in the Alien franchise, which brings us to the main contents of today's video, where we will be having our primary focus on the character of Annalie Call. Now, Call is an auton, or in simpler words, a different type of artificial life form. And in case the concept of an auton is still unclear to you, autons are basically machines that are manufactured by machines. Gear yourselves up for an exciting video as we delve into the character of Anna Lee Call while simultaneously stressing her role in the movie Alien Resurrection and also explore what happened to her character post the film. Are you ready? Let's dive right into the video then. But before we get into our explanation, we do have one very small request. If you enjoy our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now let's begin. Who is Anna Lee Call? Truth be told, very little is known about Anna Lee Call's early life. However, as an auton, it is expected that she was designed and created by other machines. Having said that, one does not know what her initial purpose was. Now, Call specifically belonged to the category of the few synthetics to have made it through the mass recall of all synthetics post the bloody 24th century event, otherwise known as the recall. After this, Call, in all probability, went into hiding, taking the guise of a human so as to prevent herself from getting caught and discovered. Now, it is not really clear exactly when, but sometime later, Call came to know about the United Systems Military Covert Project of attempting to recreate the alien species by cloning the deceased Ellen Ripley. This naturally led her to take steps to make sure that the project failed at all costs. Apparently, Call had managed to lay her hands on this top secret information before the mass recall by gaining access to a USM mainframe, and in turn, coming to know about every other secret operation the government was involved in. Hell bent on wiping out the xenomorph, she joined a cadre of smugglers and mercenaries, or in other words, the crew of the resupply ship, Betty. While posing as a lowly engineer, after having discovered the crew's involvement in the Xenomorph cloning project taking place on board the classified medical research vessel USM Auriga. Annalie Call, Alien Resurrection, POV. Mind you, since a lot is happening in the movie, our focus will strictly be on the character of Annalie Call. Now that this is clear, let us get on to analyzing her character from the perspective of the movie. So, we first get to see Call on board Betty. She is the crew's newest member there and is seen being treated with disdain and mockery by the other members, all except for mercenary and engineer Dom Vreed. Call is shown to be caring and considerate, especially towards Vreed, but whether that was merely a feature of her cover persona is a topic that is often open to interpretation. Anyway, we find Call delivering a cargo of kidnapped civilians in hypersleep capsules to the scientific team of Dr. Mason Wren on board the military vessel USM Auriga as a member of the Betty crew. After the Betty crew's first encounter with Ripley 8, and especially with Call recognizing the name of Ripley and experiencing Ripley 8's physical prowess briefly, she gets a fair idea of the gravity of the whole situation. Like it or not, it was Call's concern for humankind that led her to try to thwart the USM Xenomorph breeding program in the first place. After Call's first encounter with Ripley 8, she was quite certain that Ripley 8 would be used to create new Xenomorphs. Unaware of the fact that she was already a little too late in intercepting, Call sneakily made her way into the secure regions of the ship, particularly where Ripley 8 was being held. Goes without saying that Call's sole intention was to kill Ripley 8 in cold blood and stop the scientific team from extracting the cloned alien queen embryo from inside Ripley 8. But it did not take Call much time to realize that the queen had already been surgically removed from Ripley 8 and that it was already being bred, with Ripley 8 introducing herself as Ripley, Ellen, Lieutenant First Class, number 36706, Call corrects Ripley 8 by telling her that Ellen Ripley died 200 years ago and that Ripley 8 is nothing but a creation, an artificial construct that has been grown in the lab. As we move further into the storyline, Call eventually gets apprehended by Dr. Red, who confronts the entire Betty crew, telling them that there are penalties for terrorist activities. It is fitting to state that the whole confrontation quickly takes a violent turn, and the Betty crew gains the upper hand in no time, taking Dr. Wren and surviving soldier Vinny DiStefano as prisoners. As for Call, she is warned by Frank Elgin, Betty's captain, who threatens to execute her if she is found lying to him. Around the same time, the clone xenomorphs on board instigate a mass breakout and slaughter most of the USM Auriga personnel in the process. This leaves the Betty crew with no other option but to make their way towards their ship to escape, and they are joined by Ripley 8 on the way. The group also encounters surviving xenomorph host, 
Larry Purvis, or in simpler term, one of the kidnapped civilians who had earlier been delivered to Dr. Ren. Before Call insists on taking Purvis along with them, Ripley 8 explains to him how he will eventually die, sparing none of the gory detail. At one point in the movie, Call gets easily duped by Dr. Ren into handing him her zip gun, only to be shot by him with it. To everyone's horror, Call is seen falling straight into the water, seemingly into the clutches of a waiting xenomorph. However, she reappears minutes later, completely unharmed, and discloses her real identity as an auto. Once her true identity is revealed, Ripley 8 has call patch into the USM Auriga's computer and set it to crash to exterminate all the xenomorphs on board. When the survivors reach Betty, they find Ripley 8 arriving in time, having managed to escape from the Queen's chamber. However, unbeknownst to Ripley 8 and the rest, the newborn followed her and made it onto the ship seconds before it departed. Call was cornered by the creature in the vessel's cargo hold and was about to be killed, had it not been for Ripley 8 arriving and telling the newborn not to harm. After Ripley 8 deceived the newborn and killed it by ejecting it into space, the Betty made its way to Earth. The movie ended with Call asking Ripley 8 what they should do next, which Ripley 8 replied, saying that she had no idea because she herself was a stranger there. What happened to Annalee Call after the movie? Of course, there is more to the character of Annalee Call than just the movie, and this brings us to the four-issue limited crossover comic book series, Aliens vs. Predator vs. The Terminator. Penned by Mark Schultz, penciled by Mel Rupp, and inked by Christopher Ivey. The comic book series gives us a fair idea of what happened to Call right after Jean-Pierre Jonet's alien resurrection. Please know that a lot is happening in the comic, so while we will be exploring the comic issue-wise, our focus will be entirely on Call. Issue 1. Which side are you on? Annalie Call locates Ripley 8 in a sewer-dwelling community and brings her back to the base of her operation. There, she expresses her sadness to Ripley 8, stating that she simply disappeared after the events of Alien Resurrection, while Call believed that they would stick by each other. Ripley 8 looks at Call and tells her that she seems to have done fine independently and that she has always been great at organizing things. This prompts Call to inform Ripley 8 about a new military operation on the science station Typhoon. Call is certain that a man named Trollenberg is leading a team in developing a hybrid super soldier that involves the harvested DNA of Linguafoda acaronsi, or in simpler words, the harvested DNA of a xenomorph. Naturally, Call tries her best to get Ripley 8 on board with her plan and team. She fills Ripley 8 in on the current updates of the situation and how she and her team have gained access to Typhoon by posing as a food catering auxiliary service. The Call tells Ripley 8 that they need her because the whole thing involves alien genetic samples, the same cloning technology that resurrected Ripley 8 as a hybrid with extra human strength and function. This prompts Ripley 8 to grimly point out to Call that she no longer fears the alien and has even stopped dreaming about them. It's not all. Ripley 8 also bluntly adds adds that the aliens cannot be stopped and that the human race will suffer upon seeing a highly unbothered and disinterested Ripley 8. Upon seeing a highly unbothered and disinterested Ripley 8, Call is left with no other option but to blackmail Ripley 8 by stating that she will inform the military about her location if she does not agree to participate in the mission. Of course, Ripley 8 isn't left with much choice and she reluctantly comes aboard. With a predator scene making its way towards Typhoon, it becomes clear that even the feral hunter is after the super soldier, having plans of its own. As for Call, Ripley 8, and the crew, they are seen infiltrating the station in disguise, after which they take down the guards and enter the laboratory of Dr. Trollenberg. As the group marches inside, they find Dr. Trollenberg, should we say, his back facing towards them. Dr. Trollenberg is quickly revealed to be an android when bullets do not affect It is fitting to state that Dr. Trollenberg is on the verge of incapacitating Ripley 8, when the cloaked predator decapitates him. While this leaves everyone shocked for a while, the predator, now decloaked, is thrown back into the room. The first chapter ends with the predator engrossed in an intense fight with a giant super soul that Dr. Trollenberg had been working on earlier. Issue 2, The Guiding Voice of a Safe. With Call, Ripley 8, and the crew finding themselves in the middle of a brutal, vicious fight, they realize that the super soldier is actually an alien android hybrid. Adding to their horror is the realization that the super soldier is also impervious to every possible attack from the intergalactic hunter. Addition, the super soldier flaunts his power to adapt to battle conditions by absorbing metal objects to regenerate damage. He easily tears apart the arm of the predator, after which he absorbs part of the exterior bulkhead of the lab and opens a hole in the vacuum. After witnessing the super soldier dispatch the predator, Call and the rest quickly return to their shuttle. As for the super soldier, he is seen escaping in an escape pod and taking some alien chest bursters along with him right before Typhoon blows up from the breeze. Despite seeing the space station explode, Ripley 8 has a bad feeling that the super soldier has somehow survived. This prompts Call to take out Dr. Trollenberg's skull, which he picked up from the station early, and suggests she back into the memory cache to get more information. 
the super soldier is seen working on what appears to be another super soldier inside the escape pod. We then return to Call, who manages to access Dr. Trollenberg's memory skull, where she finds an interactive recording of John Connor. Connor explains the Skynet war and emphasizes the Skynet resurrection program, revealing how it created crypto terminators capable of existing in civilization indefinitely. Through Connor's recording, we get a glimpse of the very creation of the super soldier. It is also disclosed that Dr. Trollenberg was a crypto terminator. Recording ends with Connor stressing that Skynet threatens all life in the universe and must be destroyed, as the new batch of Terminators would be unstoppable. Immediately after Call logs out of Dr. Trollenberg's memory, a trio of Predator spaceships surround their freighter. The Predators teleport aboard and disappear with Ripley 8, leaving behind a shocked Call and her crew. The chapter concludes with the escape pod reaching its destination, where two super soldiers emerge. Issue 3, The Connection Call is still shocked by the sudden turn of events, and while trying to think of the possible reason that led to the Predators abruptly abducting Ripley 8 right before their eye, she concludes that the Predators took Ripley 8 for the same reason she and her crew wanted her in the first place. Ripley 8's Psychic Connection with the Aliens Call explains to her crew that the Predators are already aware of Ripley 8's genetic heritage and that there is a fair chance they want Ripley 8 by their side in their battle against the Super Soul. No wonder Call decides to turn the tables by taking advantage of the situation. The rest of this issue shows the Predators extracting the location of a stockpile of aliens from Ripley 8's genetic memory and offering her the honorable chance to fight and die alongside them. The Super Soul, on the other hand, are eventually seen beginning their successful assault and also taking over the Black Astro or another, the very location of the stockpile of aliens. Call and the crew are also seen proceeding toward the Black Asteroid. Issue 4, Future Hell An entire fleet of the Navy arrives and surrounds the Black Asteroid from all sides. They plan to take back control of the station, but before they can act on it, they are wiped out by a highly powerful energy surge. Call and her crew witness this from a distance as they realize that the black asteroid is temporarily drained of all external power. Call has her ship slip unnoticed into a docking bay. In the meantime, Ripley 8 and the Predators have already infiltrated the station, and they realize that the two super soldiers have created another batch of monstrous-looking super soldiers. The Predators quickly prove that they don't stand a chance against the super soldiers, especially given the latter's ability to absorb vast amounts of energy. If you think this is hard to believe, Wait till we tell you that the Super Soldiers also display their power to render the self-destructive weapons of the Predators useless. Ripley 8, left with no other option, is forced to unleash the full-grown aliens from their containment cells to even the odds. Within seconds, the acidic blood of the Xenomorphs makes the Super Soldiers defenseless, which the rest of the Predators take full advantage of before falling prey to the unforgiving hounds of hell themselves. Around the same time, Ripley 8 accidentally runs into Call and one of her crew members. Ripley 8 tells them to get out of the station before the place self-destructs. Call asks Ripley 8 to come along with her, but the latter thanks her for bringing her back into the fight and tells her that she has to take care of one last job before leaving. Although Call isn't too happy to leave Ripley 8 behind, her crew member forcibly takes her away to safety before the place blows up. As for Ripley 8, she hunts down the Alpha Super Soldier and makes it inside his escape pod right on time. It is fitting to state that Ripley 8 manages to kill the prototype super soldier at the end of the day, and doing so also causes her own death. The final chapter ends with Call telling her crew that she sincerely hopes Ripley 8 has attained her peace and regained her dignity and soul, having saved mankind's soul. Analyst verdict. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video here. So what are your thoughts on Annalie Call? Does her character fascinate you? Also, how did you find the four-issue limited crossover comic book series? We would love to know your thoughts about it in the comments section down below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Please do leave a thumbs up and stay tuned with us as we promise to come back with more exciting content. Till then, goodbye and thanks for watching. Have a nice one.